Hi there, my name is Heather McPherson and I run the Southwest Sexual Health Alliance and I'm also a couples and sex therapist in Austin, Texas. Today, our guest is the amazing Dr. Sarah Nasser Zadeh. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Of course, nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Um, so Shaw, which is the Southwest Sexual Health Alliance, is organizing and hosting an experiential SAR uh, August 12th through the 14th, 2016, in one of the best cities in the country, Austin, Texas. That's next month, people. Uh, Dr. Sarah is set to present this one kind workshop, and this will be unlike any other SAR you've ever attended. Uh, and, and actually, we only have six spots left, too. So you, you've got to make sure you, you got to register right when you get off this, uh, watching this video. So we wanted to talk to Dr. Sarah and ask her a couple of questions as she will be the star of the show. Um, so first of all, what is a star? Well, what is in the name, right? So it's sexual attitude reassessment. Essentially, what we want to encourage people to think about when they hear SAR is um, not only is the first part of my name, so but also it's uh, because we want to let them know that regardless of the years of experience that they had with clients in whatever capacity that they work, they really would like to look at their own attitudes towards people. So um, I, actually the best example that I always give people is I was running a SAR at um, one point and then um, they were quite experienced people from around the world in that room. And we had a pretty interesting and wonderful, fascinating professor as well. So they brought different clients to us. And then they said, oh, so what did you see? What did you observe? We said, oh, so this person was older. This person was younger. This person had this problem. This person had that problem. And then all of a sudden, the professor got actually quite agitated and said, you didn't see that they, they were different colors than you. You didn't see that they were taller or shorter than you. And that's really um, what we want to bring to people's attention, to look beyond what is quite, you know, what we are thought as therapies. So everybody is equal, everybody, but actually, no. Before you get there, you first need to see the differences and then get to the similarities and that empathetic side. And um, this is what we want to get to, really get to the cores of beliefs and attitudes of therapists and educators, whomever that work with people in the capacity of sexual health advocates. Very well said. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your background and how it will apply to the SAR experience? Well, um, I can give you several versions of my background. First of all, uh, um, I think that what is most relevant to our work here is I had the privilege to uh, be from a country that is quite, well, conservative in certain aspects and then I was born and raised in Iran educated in England I lived in New York for a while and then now in California and also all the way through I worked I think it came to I have actually a map that I pinned all the countries that I worked with I think around 31 countries now that I had the privilege to actually go in and work with people actual couples actual professionals That's policy awesome. makers and uh it's, it's actually a real privilege because you then get to see what brings us all together as humans and what are those unique spots that every culture can offer. So I will definitely bring that to the SAR experience that we have. And I'm hoping not to shock people too much, but um, just get ready. There's some shocking points too. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it sounds pretty incredible. I mean, you're going to bring this global perspective, which seems really different than any other SAR that I've seen. Um, and to be able to do that in a really um, kind of forward and progressive way to challenge our participants, and even if they've been to a lot of SARs in the past, this is going to be different. It's not going to be the old school SAR where you sit in a room and watch a bunch of porn. This is going to really challenge like the cultural and global aspect of human sexuality. Yes, and also two points I have to uh, point out, Heather, here. I'm glad you mentioned that. One is, um, if you even get online and read about the reviews that people write about SAR, and also based on feedback that people receive, and just that you know I attend any SAR that I can get my hands on. Because I think you know, everybody is different, everybody does it differently, and it's just really good you know, for our own development. Oh, yeah, that. I Absolutely. So one of the things that I realized is that the material could be quite old. 
Mm. And, um, you know, in this day and age with Instagram, with, you know, Twitter, we want new, we want fresh, we want relevant material. So I promise that to my audience, definitely. The other thing is when we say global, some people shy away. They think that, oh, okay, then maybe, for example, genital cutting has nothing to do with us, which does, by the way, it happens in the US as well. But it's very interesting that people think, oh, okay, so I'll just attend as an observer. It's not going to apply to me. It will actually apply to you because I will make it local to you. So, um, yeah, I think that's one thing that I also wanted to highlight, that although it's global, but also it's highly applicable in anybody's practice as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. I'm, I'm glad that you said that. Um, so a, a little bit more about Dr. Zara's background. She's a social psychologist. She's an ASEC certified sexuality counselor, which ASEC is the American Association for Sexuality Educators, Counselors, and Therapists. And by the way, the SAR is ASEC approved. So you will need this if you want to get certified. And if you don't want to get certified, it's just great for all therapists and educators and people working in the sexual health field, doctors, um, to be able to attend this experience and kind of challenge their biases and values around sexuality. Um, so you're globally recognized for your contributions to the field of sexual health and reproductive health at the clinical as well as the policy and educational levels. And you're also an award-winning author, BBC host, consultant, and technical advisor to the United Nations Population Fund. So some pretty impressive credentials you have. So we're really excited to have you. Um, yeah, so, so the second question I have is just, what, what's the theme of the SAR and how it, will, how will it be different? I know we already discussed a little bit how it'll be different, but can you tell us about what this SAR experience, again, August 12th through the 14th, just in a couple of weeks, what will it be about? Well, uh, one of the things that I would like to bring to any experiential workshops is, um, first of all, let's go back to one of the points that you mentioned, and again, uh, maybe clarify for some colleagues who haven't been mm -hmm. to um, SAR before. When we say come to a workshop to challenge yourself, it's not like a boot camp at the gym that you feel like, oh my God, am I up for it or not? It's also self-reflection, and I promise that you will be in safe hands, because um, this could be pretty, you know, like... Um, um, you might be questioning in your mind that do I want to be challenged at this point of my life, like in the midst of summer, but do I really want to be challenged? <laughs> like, You're on vacation. <laughs> yes. So you just came back from vacation. Do I want to steer things up? Mm -hmm. But also, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a self-development um, um, workshop, so to speak. Yes, we say it's for professionals, but what you gain from it is way more than um, being a professional in the field, what to do with clients. Mm -hmm. Also, it has to do with you. You will never be the same. That I can promise you. So I'm not sure if this is the philosopher in me that would like to question the questions and bring the simple things out. And um, I really would like to look at it as distilled essence of everything. So in doing that, we are all humans. And our first point of contact with the world is our five sensory aspects, right? So yes, we also have gut feelings and gut in us to um, instinctively uh, move us forward in life. But also, if you don't polish your five senses, then I'm not sure how good your gut will direct you in life. So these are different things that we are going to talk about and we are going to go through that lens when we are working. We are going to touch about um, a touch up on taste. You're not going to taste anyone, by the way. But we're going to talk about taste. When we're going to talk about different parts of brain. Uh, that are involved. We don't get too academic, I promise. We'll make it simple. But um, um, but we'll make sure that we cover all the five senses because that's how essentially we perceive the world. And for people who are um, able differently, for example, people with hearing loss, people with um, sight loss, any of these tastes, um, uh, taste uh, loss, hopefully not. Um, so these are the... Um, we are going to go uh, through the route of other senses and see what will happen then. What are the other senses that could be highlighted for them? And what are the things that we need to keep in mind when we are working with senses of other people? So we are going to essentially talk about our perceptions through our five senses and also through our cog cognitive mind. And also we are going to uh, learn how to be aware 
of those perceptions and um, hopefully how to translate it to better understanding of the world. So um, it will be different from other stars because of the contemporary nature of the content, the global nature of it is quite uh, fast paced. It will be fast paced and uh, I trust the intelligence of the participants. So we go very fast and uh, um, of course we pace ourselves, but, uh, but you know, in this day and age, we don't need to spend way too much time on any, any topics. We don't have too much time together. It's about like a day and a half, but so uh, we have to make sure that we are not brushing through stuff and also we are not shying away from any important stuff either. So in that sense, these will be what will be covered. And when we say that we are going to challenge you, it's not that we are going to challenge you to your course and you're gonna be disabled when you're walking out. But, and it's not like a boot camp that you go in and you're just thinking and then contemplating, should I go, should I not go? I really invite you to uh, treat yourself to this. Mm -hmm. SAR because I feel like that's how I look at it when I go to a SAR I feel like okay so which areas of my attitude and behavior and beliefs I'm not familiar with mm -hmm. so, at least for me and you know that you know that about educators and therapists and everyone we are always looking to improve and know ourselves better so this is the best way mm -hmm. and uh, so the theme for this um, SAR specifically and where, whatever that I work with is the five senses because we are going to bring, we are going to perceive the world through our five, five senses. And then through that and also some other sociocultural and contextual factors, we are going to shape our gut feeling. So we are going to talk about all of that as when, they, when somebody walks into our office, what is that gut feeling? And what are we perceiving through those five senses? So these are the things that we're going to talk about um, a lot through anything that we do um, in the workshop. And also for people who are differently abled, we are going to talk about their senses as well. As a, so now what if you don't have hearing um, abilities? What is, what is the other sense that is compensating and how does it play out in your work? So these are the things that we are going to definitely talk about. So the theme will be uh, challenging our perceptions it's all about perceptions. And also, um, we are going to talk about five senses. Okay. That, that sounds really interesting. I mean, just to think about someone that maybe doesn't have a, a strong sense of taste or is really sensitive to taste and how that impacts their sexuality. And someone who um, maybe is hard of hearing or just has slight hearing loss or mild to moderate hearing loss, how that impacts their sexuality. I mean, there's so much that we can talk about in terms of, um, yeah, our perspective and the five senses, our perceptions. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Well, this sounds like an amazing SAR. I'm really excited for it. And again, it's August 12th through the 14th, and it's with the Southwest Sexual Health Alliance. And if you want to register for it, you go to www.swsexualhealth.com. Uh, and we will be really excited to have you with us. It's going to be a small group. And again, the deadline, I don't think I said that yet, the deadline is August 1st. So thanks so much, Dr. Sarah. We really appreciate you talking with us today. And uh, we'll see you in just a few weeks. Absolutely. Can't wait. Thanks. <laughs>